my instinct is to go once I start to fatigue, it's to start to go into normal movement patterns, which is kind of that block squat sort of position where I'm going vertical. And so it's really been challenging for me to focus on keeping consistent form that's appropriate for kettlebells throughout the exercises. I always kind of thought too, like I needed a big blocker. Um, and that's what I played with in college. But when I got to the pro tour, I just realized that I needed like a really good fundamental player because I am seeing most of the serves. So for me to have a great setter, that really helps me out. And then just having someone who's good fundamentally at the net instead of, you know, just super tall and can't really pull and dig. Today we are going to have um, some special guests. Of course, Brandon is here. Brandon, he's going to say hello in a second, but we are also inviting Stafford Slick and Katie Spieler. They're going to come on and let you guys know their favorite workouts, what they're doing at home, and I'm really excited. So Brandon, take it away. Introduce yourself. My name is Brandon Joyner. You guys have been hearing a lot from Mark recently, but I am also a part of Better at Beach uh, and Volley Camp Promosa. Currently a player as well. Uh, I play professionally on the AVP and also have done some FI. IVBs and, and Norseka. The last decade has really been spent really fine-tuning my coaching and teaching. Before I moved out to California, I was a teacher. I taught eighth grade social studies or civics, trying to kind of figure out how I can keep growing as a coach and, and player and see what this sport has to offer. Guys, just so you know, we need you to stay to the end. Everybody who stays into the end, we are going to open up a really, really special offer for literally 15 minutes just to help everybody out during this during this quarantine. So there's going to be a really, really special offer. Stay to the end, pay attention and uh, take a, get a pen, get a paper and just start taking down some notes and some ideas because it does take us a little while to upload these videos and, and get them out so that they look pretty for everybody who's not here. But only you guys who are here live right now are going to get this offer. So thank you for being a part of it. Thank you for signing up. We always reward the people that attend live and we appreciate you guys following and be a part of the email list. We're all here to help each other. I know a lot of us are going through a tough time and hopefully we can provide ideas that either keep you entertained and definitely keep you improving and getting better throughout this time. So Brandon, what have you been doing with every day so far? Are you staying in shape? Are you working in a different direction? Are you ball practicing? I've actually, luckily at our house, we have we have bands, but I don't have access to weight. And really, I don't have that much space either. I live on the third floor. It's kind of nice. Like I've, I've actually been using our stairs a lot as like a, as a good workout. I've also, uh, with our workout program, I've just been kind of going through that and I've been doing every everything that I can. And it's kind of crazy. I didn't realize that it's like almost like 80% of our workouts, we don't really need equipment. Yeah. And then once I'm to the points where I'm doing, I'm supposed to be doing weighted stuff, then I've just started getting creative. I've started doing squats with bands instead of weight, which has actually been kind of cool. I've still been waking up with like a little bit of soreness in my hamstrings and my quads, which mm. is like, kind of makes me feel like I'm doing something right. <laughs> but yeah, just kind of, it's, it's kind of weird. I, I, I felt so good before all this happened. I've been working really hard and, but I've also, I've been kind of thinking about it and I'm like, you know, maybe this is a time to kind of take a step back from volleyball and, and the physical part of it and really try to think about what I can do mentally to help myself. I mean, especially with us not being able to coach and see people in person, that's actually been probably the hardest thing on me. Just not being able to see people, I didn't realize how much I kind of needed these conversations with people and the, the coaching opportunities. And then especially when we're playing and getting to see the guys that we train with on a regular basis, that's kind of been tough. But yeah, uh, since that's been the case, I've, we've been kind of focusing on this online stuff. So I've been putting a lot of energy into that. So pretty much any time I would be working out or playing or coaching, I'm putting putting those hours towards building better at beach.com. Kind of the world's way of telling me that maybe you should take a break for a second and let your body heal up really well. And kind of once this is all ready and done, then I'll, I'll feel really, really comfortable moving forward and getting strong again and, and getting my play back up to where it needs to be. And, but I'm not really stressing about that right now. Right. I know that it'll, it'll happen with everything that I'm doing mentally, whether it's studying video or just keeping my body in check. Yeah, guys, I think at this moment, if you're an athlete or you're a coach, every single motivational video that you've ever watched or looked at has said like, yeah, you got your ass kicked. Okay. What do you do? You learn from it. 
you get up and you learn from it. So right now, like the world is kind of dealing a lot of people like a beat down. And there's one thing that you can do from loss. You can either hide in a shell and never show up again, or you can regroup, come up with new answers, get a little more creative, work harder in the same direction that you've been working in. Or if you feel like that that's, that just doesn't have a future anymore, pivot and find a new shot. And like, that's what we do like in beach volleyball. Okay, you know, I know I needed that swing at match point and I didn't have it in my arsenal. So either I get really good at all of my other swings or I train so that I have another option in that moment. And right now all of us are at a place where, a lot of us are in a place where we need options and more options in these different moments. And so that's what, that's what we want to provide today. I do want to take you through some of the stuff that I went through yesterday. And we do want to hear your questions in the Q&A. But this one's going to be rapid fire, guys. We're going to be done in 40 minutes. I'm going to have two coaches on. Brandon's going to be here, of course. Stafford Slick is coming on in a couple of minutes. And then Katie Spieler, who is also, she runs her own club and she's an AVP player. So excited she's to have doing all some of cool them. Drills too. This is going to be really awesome. Right here, I'm just going to show you a little bit of a... Uh, what I was doing yesterday outside and these are all going to be posted on Instagram, but because you're here a little bit earlier, I'm just going to show you some easy drills here. All right. We got the screen up and running. Everybody's fired up. Okay. So this is something that I used to do every day during the summer because I had a route that was just like this where the triangle kind of came down and it dropped the ball right back to me. This is a really simple, lonely drill where it's pass, set, hit right? A nice, easy shot. For the easy shot, right? We're making sure that you're only contacting with this palm of your hand. You do not want your fingers to get on the ball. You want them to get over the ball. And over means like this, on means like this. We don't want our fingers to hit it because that's going to slow down a lot of what we do. Okay. Here I am yapping like an idiot, but <laughs> This is like a really simple drill that you can just use, guys. If you have an inclined roof or anything that's inclined, this is easy pass that hit. And what I did, a lot of us need to work on this. It's vision work. So I'm going to let the video run, right? And I'm going to let you guys hear it. I'm going to include something so that you get some vision work. So after you pass to yourself and set to yourself, between your set and your hit, you have to look forward at the wall and then back to the ball and hit. So I'll make an exaggeration. Just watch my eyes, watch my head tilt, and you can get some vision work while you're doing this. If you're an attacker in beach volleyball, you have to see the other side of the court. No matter what, you have to see the other side of the court. So this is just great, easy work. I just want you to see how we go through it. Pass to myself, set to myself, look, find the ball, and then hit. A lot of people during this drill, especially when we're live, a lot of people during this drill make the mistake of setting and looking at the same time where they'll just put the ball up and they'll look, but you have to get yourself to the ball first. So you have to see the set first, get there, then look, and then get back to the ball with your eyes. Okay. Ideally you don't look too far up. Ideally you can keep everything sort of in a peripheral, but I'm giving you an exaggeration from here where I really look down at that wall. Be a sweet idea if you could add a burpee in between the roll. So if you got an angled roof, give it a shot. Burpee between everyone. I also like how on the, uh, especially when you add in the jump at the end, mm -hmm. still being able to focus on that that last right left before you jump. Ooh. You know. Oh yeah. Okay. So talk me through that, Brandon. Go ahead. So like, especially with drills like this, where especially if you're thinking about making that contact that Mark was saying and you're and you're so worried, <laughs> you're so worried about getting the ball then a lot of times we can lose focus on some of the smaller things so like I like that I mean you're getting a chance to make a really good pass where you're shuffling to that ball and then you're making a good set and then you're getting those last two steps so right before you go to jump every single time you're having a pretty a pretty good right left so I think that's something that's kind of underutilized, especially in drills where it's by yourself. So here's what I'm talking about in this video. And, and Brandon, you should kind of, you can kind of talk us through it, but I'm teaching how to bump set with spin. So Brandon, I'm going to leave it up to you to tell us like why and when we would bump set with spin. So actually I, I kind of like this conversation and I might go a completely different way that Mark would normally go, but 
especially when, whenever you're thinking about passing, you have to rely on two things. One, technique, and then two is your touch. When, whenever you're thinking about touch, touch is when you're going to have to add something different to that ball. We see it a lot. Like Mark has a really, really good side spin serve. If you don't know how to pass it, it's terrible to pass. It makes you feel like an idiot. Something that you really have to think about is you have to think about either taking the spin away from this ball or adding spin to it to get it to go to where your target is. So a lot of times you can use it in that sense if you're fighting a ball that has a lot of spin or if you're also playing in the wind. I think whenever you're playing in the wind, you might have to think about either passing or setting with some spin on the ball and you kind of have to get creative. So especially with a drill like this, where you're trying to focus on really getting underneath that ball and then trying to find kind of a similar trajectory, but adding some kind of spin, uh, I would think you're trying to fight off something that is coming at you, whether it's a serve or a hit that has weird spin on it, or if you're fighting some form of conditions. I'm gonna use, anytime I have to fight the wind with a set, I'm going to put some spin on it. So if the right. spin is coming, if the wind is coming at me, my goal is to make the wind, the ball spin in the direction of the wind. Right. Because if the ball floats, if the ball floats when you're fighting against the wind, it's going to be unpredictable, completely unpredictable. So right. if you have medium wind and a medium distance, you have to use spin, right? If you have long distance and even, even a light wind, like you're setting from the back line, you have to use spin. If there's no wind, don't worry about it because it's not going to affect anything. But it's just really important to be able to learn how to do it. Cool news, guys. Stafford is here. Guys, remember if you're here and you weren't here in the beginning, please, please, please stay to the end. We have a really good offer for you. If you're training at home, you signed up for this webinar because you're interested in training at home. We have a pretty sick offer. So stay to the end. And it's only for people who are here live Friday, March 27th. Let's everybody welcome Stafford. Flick. Oh, oh. <sighs> like you're on vacation. Hi. Yeah. Are we all? Isn't that what this is? True. Yeah, pretty much. Staff, have you been staying in shape? Have you been practicing? Have you been doing any ball work? Have you been doing anything else? And can uh, can you tell me your your Instagram handle so I can put it in the chat? It's at... Uh, it's super complicated. It's at Stafford Slick. If you want to follow Stafford, he's not too crazy, but he talks a lot of smack. So it's pretty entertaining on Instagram. And he is a gentle, like gentle dad smack. And he flexes <laughs> a lot. So <laughs> yeah. you always get some good pictures. Yeah. Um, you got to know where the cameras are. Exactly. So Staff, what are you doing right now to stay in shape? I mean, at this point, everyone's just kind of scrambling to figure out how they can keep themselves kind of in check during this uncertain time. We have been fortunate enough, I guess I've been fortunate enough to be a part of the USA national team right now. And so through that, we have a trainer and have had access to kind of supermarket sweeps. So ran into the gym before everything shut down and Super plucked out some, <laughs> yeah, Plucked okay. out some kettlebells and some med balls and stuff. So really right now, it's a lot of dynamic, lightweight, but explosive reps and just kind of keeping the body moving to keep it from rusting out. Can you explain just like in, in super layman terms, what do you mean by dynamic and explosive? I would say anything that challenges you to move quickly. For me, that is, for explosive at least, doing kettlebell swings, focusing on good hip hinge and explosive power through the hips. What do you mean by hip hinge? Hip hinge. So typically what happens when people pick up a kettlebell and start swinging it around, their first instinct is to squat, kind of like they're loading for a jump. But ultimately, that's not getting to the power portions of your jump, which comes from the hips. And so you want to start moving your hips in a backward direction first, bringing the kettlebell back through the legs and then exploding straight forward through the hips. Yeah, exactly. So less of an up and down vertical movement and more of a back to front. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're so dynamic. We, we don't like this with kettlebells. We like more. That. Exactly. Yep. 
Right. But making sure not to overextend at the top, you want to obviously keep a steady, strong core, like once you reach the top. And then, so I, I think something that's been fun for me during this time is actually my cousin lives in Vancouver and is doing personal, personal fitness and training uh, specifically with kettlebells. And so he reached out and asked if I wanted to learn a few things because there's a lot that can be done with kettlebells. And so, so he took me through a session last Saturday and I got hooked. And so we did an Instagram live Wednesday and we're actually going to do another one tomorrow at 7 a.m. But yeah, I mean, kettlebells are super versatile. You can get a lot of explosive strength and channel those movements and kind of become more efficient with those movements. What I found is that for me, my instinct is to go, once I start to fatigue, it's to start to go into normal movement patterns, which is kind of that block squat sort of position where I'm going vertical. And so it's really been challenging for me to focus on keeping consistent form that's appropriate for kettlebells throughout the exercises. So yeah, it's been, it's been cool. What if people don't have a kettlebell? Grab a breakfast burrito and watch. No. <laughs> so anything that we're going to be doing, uh, you could supplement with a dumbbell at home if you have one or trying to think what else you could do. Yeah. I guess a water bottle or fill a, fill, fill a bucket with sand or <laughs> a small cat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> small <something. laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's just, it's, it's been exciting for me to step out of my comfort zone of doing Olympic lifts and stuff in the gym and really try to challenge myself to learn something new during this time because I think even from the the short experience that I've had with kettlebells I think it's something that I'm going to continue to lose to use long term because there's a lot of stability things you can work on overhead stability with uh, holding the kettlebell in different ways and things like that too and Turkish get-ups and all these sort of complex movements that were super foreign to me so I see a lot of people using like the overhead like kettlebells and in the beginning I didn't understand I was just like why are you just holding something over your head what is that mm -hmm. how could that possibly be an, an athletic workout that you're trying to do how is that benefiting you as a volleyball player when you're holding or pressing heavy weight above your head and leaving it up there yeah specifically with a the kettlebell there's a couple of different ways that you can hold it I actually have one right here so I'll see if I can try to hold this and show you at the same time so there's a couple of different ways to hold it you can hold it like this straight overhead which is weight down. And this is gonna mimic more of a dumbbell sort of hold, right? Where it's pretty strong, pretty stable, something that's familiar and comfortable. And then, so that's kind of an equivalent to a strict like military press or shoulder press, things like that, which is just good for overhead stability and strength. One of the things that's become really interesting for me through learning more about kettlebells is going bottoms up. And so this way, the weight isn't directly kind of over your, I mean, you have to keep it over your strength points, over your wrist, elbow, shoulder, all that. And so when you go overhead, the tendency is for the weight to shift side to side. So you really have to fight that using a lot of stabilizers to keep it strong and steady. And so by doing that, especially going through different movement patterns while holding it above your head, you challenge muscles and smaller muscle group stabilizers in a different way. And so even with light weight, like this is a 12 kilo, so just over 20, yeah, 26 pounds. And so even with that light weight, it's still exceptionally challenging. So the stabilizers above your head, what does that do for a volleyball player? Why is that beneficial? Yes. In terms of like functional stability, I guess it's more just maintaining rotator cuff strength and support uh, so that we're swinging and taking thousands of swings over the course of a season that we're continuing to build and fine tune those smaller muscle groups rather than just like biceps or deltoids or things like that. So it really provides kind of a comprehensive sort of focus to shoulder work versus just working the major groups. And so I think, again, this is new to me. So I'm kind of doing research and trying to understand it better, but it really is challenging me in a different way. And I feel it in different places. So I know that it's working different things, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And I think like you know, if we if we challenge shoulder stability and like overhead strength, probably when you're in those weird positions and you still like you know the hit that you have to make, but you know it like it might hurt or it's definitely the wrong position, but it's the only thing that's open in that moment. I think right. having strength and being able to have the stability and, and the power in all of those weird positions, it gives you the ability to put a little bit of pace on that awkward swing because now like your arm is strong when it's over in all different positions. Sure. So now you can bring it from here like back down to there with a little bit yeah. more power. Yeah. And one of the things I think that's been a focus for me, at least for this past off season and now potentially off season number two is how to generate power and speed from the top of my swing versus generating. I mean, this, the standard is like pike super hard, hit the ball low, contact low and 
you know, I, bounce it. God, I totally disagree and with so, you who bikes and teaches. Right, exactly. Bikes. And so, Get but out. like that's, that's for me, that was like, oh, that's how I'm going to hit super hard is like generate a whole lot of force. But that force comes from this location versus up super high. And so if you can generate pace and snap from the top of your swing, that gives you that much more over the height of the block or that much more control from, from an extended position. And so cool. challenging myself to maintain strength and stability in those extended positions is going to help reinforce that kind of idea. That's where I want to be swinging from. Do you have any um, other at-home exercises that you do or just like sequences or stretches or moves that you do to keep you fast when you're high? Yeah, I mean, I think I think band work is great. Going through some resisted band swings and focusing on maybe not even following through all the way, but just being powerful and explosive up to that point, right? And so up to that point of contact at a fully extend at full extension. Uh, I mean, again, right now is a great time for I think sometimes we we run into the gym and we just hit the major muscle groups, right? So because we don't have time, so we're gonna go. Okay, I'm gonna do squats, I'm gonna do deadlifts, and maybe I'll do bench or shoulder press, and then you know get in, get out. But now that we've got time, like fill that with maintaining those small muscle groups and using those dynamic banded stretches and exercises. I mean, Ty Tramley was one of the guys that I watched forever, and he's doing constant band work all the time to maintain healthy shoulders and i, I mean i think it was because he had a separated ac at some point and then kind of went okay i gotta well, start taking care of myself his chest when he was <laughs> hit the biggest right. chest on the avp for right. like six years, he was just not yeah. bench pressing like i haven't bench pressed in three years dumbbell yeah. press but i have not gotten over 52 and a half pounds like yeah. and i remember at a right. point when i was able to bench 255 like i think that was my highest yeah and then, yeah, yeah. And those stupid little like joint tears. It's like, what are these going to do for me on the beach? And if you see right. pictures oh, you know. from like my first three years, I was, I was all like footballed out and showing off. Yeah. As I got <laughs> older, I got like smaller and frailer. But I, <laughs> we, we start, shoulders start to sloop and then our chest just falls away. It just doesn't exist <laughs> anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you just got to embrace it at no, this but, point. Yeah. Right. This is really cool. Jerome is asking if you can demo just a little bit of, of some band work. Do you have any elastics with you? But if we could just demo a couple of like good band work exercises, like Brandon, if you do one, I'll do one in Stafford, you do one. Band work that you would do before or during the gym for arm swinging stuff and stability. Sure. Funny if we just ghosted everybody. <laughs> <laughs> just made them wait for 10 Or Or we all ended up on one camera. <laughs> <laughs> So guys, just a reminder to, to let you know what we have. I posted it in the chat here, but we have a 60-day strength and conditioning program as well. And all of the like shoulder stability that Stafford's talking about here, this, this wasn't scripted or anything, but we spend at least 12 minutes almost every workout just on shoulder stability and strengthening. So if you want to just like look into that program, I'll show you a few of the ones that we have here. But introducing new exercises, if you can teach us. So Brandon, go ahead first. All right. This is actually one of my favorite ones that I picked up from the strength and conditioning plan that we have. You can use really any type of band. So I'm going to do the wall crawls, Mark. Just oh, those are torture. That. So you can either have a band like this and you just put it on your hands. Or if you don't have a band like that, this is just like your normal elastic band, you can grab it where your hands are facing up and then you kind of turn your palms toward one another. I'm gonna do it with the blue band just because it's what I have. You're here and then you're gonna spread your arms apart. So I, it's gonna be hard for me to kind of show you cause I'm gonna do it on the wall. But whenever you're doing this, you wanna try your best to keep your arms at 90 degrees or I guess that's what it would be. Mm -hmm. And you're always want your the tendency that you're going to have is your elbows are going to start to pull away. So you want to tr try really, really hard to keep those, keep, almost keep your arms parallel to one another. And so if I was on the wall, I would be here. Can you see me at all? Yeah. And I'm going to try to just climb up the wall until I'm fully extended. And then I would just keep going back and forth, up and down. And I usually do, I did that yesterday. I did two rounds of 15, so up and down is one. And if you can make it through two rounds of 15 without like wincing or crying out to, for help, then you've got the strongest shoulders in the world. By far the, the most intense shoulder stability that I've ever done. I did it with a physical therapist after a shoulder injury. And after like seven trips, I was 
toast. What about you, Stafford? You're up. One of the things that I've been doing kind of with respect to the overhead stability is reaching to full extension. Hold on, let me wrap it up. Just with the overhead stability is getting the band behind you and they're really just working through pulsing movements this way, right? Kind of going overhead and even into full like movements this way. I feel like a lot of times people are going here and going all the way through which I feel is really unnecessary. I think all the power I want to generate is coming from here to here. So I want to pulse through these positions and then go through movements up to this point, staying strong and stable through the core. Again, this is more of a, me, that would be more of a like pre-match, pre-practice. That's not necessarily like a burnout, but it's been challenging and difficult for me because I'm so used to kind of wanting to drive all the way through to a full body versus strengthening that shoulder and that full extension position. I love that, that you're also learning to get away from this pike position, which I think everybody like mentally, they see like, oh, the ball goes down, so my body has to bring it down instead of like if we look at golfers right all of the like force should go into the ground like you should be swinging down to generate speed and then the face of the club makes it go up and like i think about volleyball the swing really similarly like i'm gonna swing fast up and like barely forward but i'm never gonna swing down or tug down and only the angle of my hand makes the ball go down but like, even if I'm right. still on my way up, that ball is still going to go down if I hit the right part of the ball. So right. I've been focusing on staying high, just like you're talking about, but and not trying to bring things down. That's all just follow through. Like my mm -hmm. speed generation, and, and I'm happy we're kind of on the same page here, is that the speed generation is up here, not here. And I see people get their right. hands and then try to like, more acceleration happens here than actually happens before contact. Mm -hmm. Right. And they all net because they're like 5'10 and they're trying to bounce. Right. See you showing off on open net. Yeah. I blame you for people's uh, swing. <laughs> you know, they're all like the 5'10 people who swing the right way. Right. They see one bounce on the 10 foot line and they all want to swing down. Yeah. I mean, at least well, Stafford does it in games too. Yeah. Well. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I save it for the games. Yeah. I think it's just something interesting that you said or kind of the analogy towards golf any power that you're generating for the ball to go is happening before you contact the ball. And so if we think about that similar position, right, as an attacker, we want to generate that power before we contact the ball, not we're piking and like grunting super hard, like after, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. we want that speed and quick arm whip to happen at the top of our swing versus trying to compact and get super gnarly at the end. Stafford, we'd yeah. love if you, uh, if you hung out for a few more minutes with us. Uh, we only got like nine more minutes. Uh, if you want to hang out, cool. If you want to go take care of the fam, awesome. But I'm going to give the show over to Katie. And thank you so much for coming, dude. And yeah, man. Sharing all that knowledge. That's, I think people are finding real value. Guys, like, if you got something good from Stafford, please just let me know in the, in the chat. Like, let us know if you got it. And then let us know if you want us to bring him back for some more knowledge that he's picking up. <laughs> thumbs up or thumbs down. <laughs> just like, you want us like, to bring him back. Like um, Caesar. Just, yeah, head. just, <laughs> is it here? Or, uh, yeah. All right. Later, fellas. That was fun. Later, staff. Thank you. Katie, what's up? What's up? So <laughs> introduce yourself to those of those people who don't know us because we got people from like Belgium, Sweden, Finland, Norway. Who are you? What's your high finishes? How tall are you as far as inspiration goes? Perfect. I'm Katie Spieler. I'm 25. I'm from Santa Barbara, California. I played at University of Hawaii. I was a two tall two-time All-American there, and I am 5'5". Five, five. I think five, that's five. the shortest player on tour. I started a beach volleyball club in Santa Barbara, in my hometown, but I live in Hermosa, so I commute back and forth, so I train in Hermosa, and then I coach in Santa Barbara, so I travel kind of a lot, but Jeez. it's great. And so yeah, <laughs> I grew up playing, and I was born into like a huge volleyball family, and I'm actually back at my parents' house, and so I'm having my dad reconstruct the net that I made him construct for me when I was little but he still has to put up the net part so we just did a little ribbon here but you can set up a like fake net or with a ribbon and tape really easily if you just have like two posts or poles so that's what I've been doing even in Hermosa right now since the nets are down so I was just gonna share a few little drills you can do just with a ribbon and if you don't have something like this you can just do it over like an invisible net and Katie you're putting all this stuff on your Instagram too right 
Yeah, just on my club okay. Instagram, mostly for our kids and any okay. adults. Okay. But it's can I can I tag that in the chat? What's the what's the name yeah. of your Instagram? It's East Beach Volleyball Academy. Well, I think we got both your uh, personal and your <laughs> club IG on there, so you're you're gonna be getting tons of requests. Go follow Katie because, like, for all of you who keep telling me that you need a big or you need somebody tall or you need a blocker, that's the only reason you haven't gotten to playoffs or or gotten a tournament. Like, look at Katie. To me, she's got to be the most inspiring person on tour because she is the shortest professional player right now at 5'5 or 165. But she's a professional beach volleyball player. So any of you saying that, like, you can't, you don't have the shots, you just need to be bigger. Oh, if I was your height, of course I would do that. Like, shut up because Katie is here proving you wrong. You play with Delaney, right? Yeah, and Delaney is 5'10. And before yeah. that, I played with Carissa Cook, and she's about the same height. And... I always kind of thought too, like I needed a big blocker um, and that's what I played with in college. But when I got to the pro tour, I just realized that I needed like a really good fundamental player because I am seeing most of the serves. So for me to have a great setter, that really helps me out. And then just having someone who's good fundamentally at the net instead of, you know, just super tall and can't really pull and dig. But yeah, I definitely always hated my size growing up. And then now I love it because people come up to me and they say, wow, it's so cool that you can be, a, you know, you made it at the pro level. And to me, like, that's really special because it was just a lot of the work that I put in and you see it pay off and it, that's the most satisfactory thing. That's awesome. And yeah. plane rides are, are pretty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan Dirty that's, that's great. It's a win-win. <laughs> yeah. Should I get into these drills? Yeah, let's see a couple. Okay, top no, 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 three like, will be seven. fast. So basically, I just was always back here doing drills on my own. So I came up with a lot of weird stuff, but I'm going to do some pretty simple ones and then we'll get a little bit more advanced. So first one is just pass to yourself, set over your net and then turn around, do it again. Try to get 10. So I'll just a few here. So pass, hand set, pass, oh, went under the ribbon. Call yourself a professional. I haven't warmed up here. <laughs> okay so just pass set over the ribbon try to get 10 this next one i kind of came up with this recently actually but it goes into what you guys were talking about with stability with stafford mm. so one thing when we're laying out to get a dig we're often kind of in this position and you have to have a really strong core to be in that position so i turned what they call a bird dog position in the gym into a little one arm touch drill. So I'm gonna go this way so you guys can see. But I go out into that bird dog, I got my one arm touches, and then I try to switch. Oh, nice. Oh, so you keep that back That's leg cool. up. I like that. Yeah, so you're really engaging your core so that when you are doing that one arm dive, yeah. you're not breaking. You're strong here, and then you have that lift. That's, That's really awesome. cool. I like that. And then we'll go back to over the net. This is a little bit more challenging for ball control. So you're going to try to do one arm, one arm, that renovation pokey, pokey, and then roll, hand set, roll shot over. Did you call it a renovation pokey? <laughs> yeah, you got to have really strong pokies in case you want to get some wall punches. <laughs> our, our little Instagram exchange. Yeah. <laughs> the house demo poke. <laughs> the four inch punch. So one arm, one arm, pokey, pokey, hand set, roll shot, one arm, oh, pokey, pokey, hand set, roll shot. I love this. Wow. Oh, it's a good, good it's a good idea to go off the camera because just don't react. It's tough, but it's fun. So just kind of getting oh, good. a ton of touches in and coming up with creative things. I think that the one silver lining of all of this is we have to learn how to get creative with our training. And that's how I grew up. And it was super helpful for just when you're in a game and wild things happen you know like it's not just past that hit it's a lot of weird stuff so if you're out here just kind of coming up with your own touches it, it's gonna teach you 
mm. how to handle that. It seemed like a lot of this stuff was was progression, you know? So like, obviously the first one you did was just passing a set over the net. And then, so you can kind of build on that. And I'm sure you probably did anyway, but like maybe the first one is just pass set over the net. The next one is pass set roll shot over the net. Yeah. You can start adding in all these different like pokies and stuff like that as you're getting more control. Exactly. And even yeah. adding in like a jump too. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. something that's super important, like probably for you, Katie, and that most amateur players would skip over that a lot of players early on in their career are absolutely, and people honestly, like 40 and 50 year olds that I coach who have been playing for 10 and 15 years have no hand control. Of yeah. The it's like pass maybe they have a handset but then like if they just have to control a ball here with bent elbows and in all of these positions like waiters and, and hand digs it falls apart immediately like as soon yeah. as i have my some of my players switch from peppering where they dig with their forearms to hitting at their face and digging with their hands it doesn't last more than four rounds and somebody who can pepper literally for 10 minutes with forearm digs cannot last four rounds when they start hitting at the face and for somebody who's i think your height you have to be an absolute master of all the hand digs up here and up yeah. here is that would you say totally. That? totally and that's actually something that like i've been filming these little drills for my kids and it's kind of cool for me because i can look back at the film and whenever i have like not a good shot or something goes wrong it's because my hand contact is not clean so when you get that full hand on the ball mm. that's when you can control like you're saying like wherever you want that ball to go on your shot it's going to go there if you get full hand contact or if you're digging but i think that that's something that's so overlooked is that if we can watch our hand hit the ball and get the full hand on contact we're going to be able to do so much awesome katie i'm, I'm gonna write your your things in the chat right here again k-a-t-i-e-s-p-i-e-l-e-r that's your Instagram. And is yeah. there anywhere else that people can find you or what should they find you for? I know you, that you run a club in Santa Barbara, right? A beach yeah, club. I run a club. Once all of this craziness is over, I am having a clinic in Eric Zahn's memory and a four-man tournament. So that was supposed to be on April 4th and 5th, but we obviously had to postpone. So keep an eye out on my Instagram for updates on that. I also have a website. It's just www.katiespeeler.com, but there's not much on it. Guys, I think, again, Katie should be one of the people who you watch and understand how differently she uses her skills and the different skills that she emphasizes for herself to be a professional because she has a different offensive set than somebody who might be 6'1", 6'0", right? She's somebody who is going to use different shots, probably a lot of pokey. I know a lot of pokies. And she's able to win and create points because she has embraced her own body and her own playing style and didn't have to look at somebody who was six foot and say, I need to play like them. And I'm going to be me to be great. Very like Adrian Karambula, like be you to be great. And I think Katie does an excellent job of that. And she's definitely an inspiration for, should be an inspiration for everybody as far as selecting your own offense and being effective no matter what. Hell yeah. Short girls for the win. Thank you. Tom. Yeah. Like All it. right. Well, thanks so much, Mark and Brandon. You guys are awesome. And Volley Camp. Yeah. Later. We'll see you soon, Katie. Thanks okay. for coming on. Yeah. Bye. As a thank you for anybody who's here, we talked about a lot of exercises with Brandon. I gave you some good ideas for at-home drills. We don't have an at-home drill course yet, but we are, after this, coming out with a big blog filled with a bunch of them. I'm going to be posting them. Brandon's going to be posting them. So Brandon, please write your Instagram in the uh, chat. Guys, go follow him. Follow me if you're not following me yet. Follow Volley Camp Promosa. If you are not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please help us. That supports us in a big way. It helps us grow. Row. As a huge thank you for coming, we have a 60-day strength and conditioning course. Since you are here live with us right now, for the next 15 minutes, Ooh. there's a 15-minute window. Guys, it's half price. Whoa. 15-minute, half price. I'm going to post the link. We already changed it posting the link right here. It gives you all of the sh shoulder stability exercises. It gives you everything that you can do. It's specific for beach volleyball. It's a bunch of leg workouts, but it's not a lot of upper body strength, like no chest um, or anything like that. A little bit of chest, but shoulder stability, hip mobility, glute activation, all of this stuff, all of these exercises, I promise you, you can get a full workout 
with two water bottles and an elastic band. And I promise you, you get better. Me and Brandon have been doing this all preseason. I know that I put four inches at 34 years old. I put four inches onto my broad jump in two and a half months using this program. Brandon's more agile and playing better than he definitely better than he ever has. Go ahead. Now you have 14 minutes. We are closing this down. It's normally 80 bucks, but just as a thank you for coming and to get more people experience with what we offer, we're offering this closing in 14 minutes and really take advantage. Is it only possible with PayPal? So you have to pay through PayPal, but you don't need a PayPal account. You can check in as a guest and use your credit card. And it does take you through that PayPal, but just use sign in as a guest and pay with credit card, okay? Guys, there's not a better offer. There's not a better way to get better at beach volleyball. If you're a volleyball or a beach volleyball player, you absolutely, absolutely need this. It is a 60 day program, Nico, and it's every day. I give you, I think, five complete rest days. Some of the days are like off, meaning that you just have movement. Like you just go through a big long warm up, and that's all you'd be going. So you now have 11 minutes. We're shutting it off, I promise you, because everybody else has already been paying 80. It's a great program. It's worth way more than that. It's 60 days. We take you through, we show you every single exercise. It's designed minute by minute, rep by rep. And if you want to be a better beach volleyball player and you're looking for a strength training program, grab it. It is a 60 day. It gives you the plan for every single day. And while you're alone, while you're not able to practice on the court, use the ball touches that uh, Katie Spieler was showing you and get a great, great workout program. Lateral speed, shoulder strength, rotational power from the core, and leg strength. You don't need weights. 80% of this is designed so that you don't even touch a weight. You just need very, very, very light, heavy objects. You can use a bag, you can use a water bottle, and you can use elastic bands for the majority of it. But you'll see once you go in, and it's a money back guarantee. 30 days, if you don't like it, if you think the program sucks, send it back, we'll close it off, no harm, but I guarantee you're gonna love it because we have not gotten a single negative review. Everybody's fired up and playing better. So guys, thank you for coming. You have 10 minutes, and then we're shutting it back to 80 bucks, but I appreciate you being here. I have to go talk to a bunch of coaches and club directors, and we're gonna run a mastermind. So if you're a part of the mastermind, and you're gonna sign into the next one, you'll go ahead, but I gotta get out of here. You have 10 minutes to sign up for that program at this discount. Love y'all, check you later.